We will be taking time on the Locked On Steelers podcast to just talk a little bit about DeMar Hamlin being a Pittsburgh man himself uh, and what happened on Monday Night Football. So uh, bear with us as we uh, acknowledge that and uh, go through that. Uh, But we will talk about that and our grades for the Steelers-Ravens game um, because we will keep up with the Locked On Steelers podcast. But we're going to make sure we do talk about DeMar Hamlin and the serious situation that that is there uh, for the former Pitt Panther and Pittsburgh man himself. Uh, but we'll talk about that a lot more right here in the Locked on Steelers podcast. I'm Chris Carter here with Alan Saunders of Pittsburgh of SteelersNow.com. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things of the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on the video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks has is the best place for you to go for daily fantasy because it's daily fantasy made is easy. Just pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can up to ten times your money on any entry. First time you just receive a one hundred percent instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars with promo code Locked On. It's L O C K E D O N Locked On, all capital letters, all one word. And again, that's PrizePicks.com promo code Locked On. Joining me, as I said earlier, is uh, Alan Saunders returning to the show. Uh, thank you, Alan, for taking time to do this. We're doing this a bit late because of the Demar Hamlin situation, um, and I, I I feel like it would be a mistake to not talk about that situation right now. When if you were watching Monday Night Football, as many people I'm sure, sure were across the country, millions even, uh, with how important that that game was for the and how excited everyone was to see those two teams play, and then if you just saw. Mar Hamlin collapse on the field, not know what's going on. And I, we're not going to get into what the we're, we're not, nothing we tell you here is going to be anything that we've learned about medical situations or anything like that. That stuff for people that are in Cincinnati that are handling it, that are doctors or people that are talking to the doctors that are there. Get that information somewhere else. But we will talk to you. And what I, what do I talk to Alan about? It's because DeMar Hamlin someone that both of us have covered as he was a captain at Pitt for Pitt football. He was a superstar safety at Central Catholic High School here in Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, he uh, he was a, he was a leader and he was a person that if you got to cover him, you knew how special he was on and off the field. Alan, I just wanted to uh, let you talk about your thoughts about about DeMar and how you've known him to be. Yeah, I mean, I think um, first of all, I just want to say personally, you know, um, can't can't stop thinking about Demar's family, yeah. uh, Nina and Mario, and and uh, they're they're good people. He's he's good people. He, um, you know, just a a great kid, a great down to earth family. Yeah. Um, you know, was never you know like a, the funny thing about Demar is you know he was a um, you know he was a really highly recruited player coming out of high school. He probably could have yeah. gone to. 2030 school a lot of places and um you never like got that like i'm a big time athlete sense from talking about him he's just a, a regular guy very hard worker i was sharing some thoughts on twitter a little while ago just about his journey to the nfl and how uh he really faced a lot of adversity like there was a lot of struggle he was supposed to be a corner he got hurt had a bunch of surgeries moved to safety um you know and and like it wasn't this like, oh yeah, like here he is, like big four, you know, big four star athlete goes to pit, becomes mm-hmm. a star. You know, like it, it was never this sort of a short thing with him. He, he always worked for everything he got. Um, talked to him last off season uh, at a football camp in the area, and and he was always very enthusiastic about you know coming back and and giving back to the community and um, just I don't know, the kind of person that you would want. Um, that you would want to to be a role model for your kid, or you would want uh, you know your 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 daughter to date, you know that 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 kind of guy. I think that's um, that's what I think of when I think of Demar Hamlin, and obviously a very talented football player. Mm. And uh, starting as a rookie uh, after being, um, se- I'm sorry, as a second round to year player after being a six round draft pick, I think shows kind of what he's all about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when he was at Pitt, and Mike Tomlin 
talked about um about, talked about this a while back too with uh when they drafted Kenny Pickett he talked about how you know Kenny Pickett and DeMar Hamlin brought the team together when they were leaders at, at the University of Pittsburgh and um you know when we go and we sit in the uh the conference room to do Pat Narduzzi press conferences uh one of the pictures that's up there that's pretty big is DeMar Hamlin leading Pitt onto the field doing the jungle as he did so many times uh for uh, pit football over the years. Um, again, we're not going to offer any information that we, that's, you know, from what we know, he was taken to the hospital. Uh, it was rumored that he was, it was said that, you know, he's, he was in critical di- condition that he was struggling to breathe. There will be updates about that all across uh, news as that comes out. But uh, here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, we wanted to just kind of take our time to offer our thoughts, our condolences and our prayers to the Hamlin family and to, um, to them, to them especially, uh, but also just uh, you know putting it out there that if there's anyone else there that, that knows Demar, that is where we are think we're thinking of you, we're thinking of him, um, and you know just in this time, you know hearing hearing this from a person that we've known, it's just an awesome person. We wanted to, I felt like it would be worth our time and your time if you're a listener or a viewer to um, learn more about the young man who who was out there, who we are praying over. He's not just another athlete out there, not that anyone is. But this guy is legit. Like all the nice things you're gonna you're gonna hear about him as people continue to check up on his status, all the charity work he did, all the nice things. This this is not hyperbole. This isn't just you know talking up a guy whose life is in a very rough state right now. It's talking about a real person who cared about other people. And when you talked to him, it was very clear that he was much bigger than a game of football. Yeah, and you see the reaction from the. I mean, obviously, this is a podcast about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Go look at the, the Twitter feed of the the current players. You know, yeah. just you know, obviously, guys like Kenny Pickett, who was a teammate of Demar's and and at Pitt, and and as you know, very close to him. But just throughout the locker room, I think you can tell that this is something that, if you care about the game of football and you participate in the game of football, um, you have a bond. And and when you see something like this, uh, I think it affects all of us, uh, player, coach. Journalist, you know, uh, whether you knew DeMar closely or you saw him in the hallway uh, or, or maybe didn't, didn't know him at all. I think uh, this is going to be um, on the minds of every person who's putting on pads uh, for practice this week, for sure. Absolutely. Again, our, our, our thoughts and our prayers go out to uh, DeMar Hamlin, if his family and any any of his loved ones um, do do go look and find uh, his charity. Uh, where they where they raise money to donate toys uh, to kids in the in the, in the community. Um, it's uh, it's it's amazing how much money it just it just eclipsed a million dollars, and their goal was twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, so uh, amazing humanity sometimes from the world when they see and they want to help uh, in any way they can, even when there's nothing that they can do other than just put out the good thoughts and prayers for Demar Hamlin. All that being said. Um, that's the situation. We wanted to give you our insight there. We are going to talk Steelers here. So if you've bit, waited patiently through that and you just you, you're, you're kind of like, hey, thanks for that. But I'd like to hear some Steelers news. We got you. We're going to talk our grades, stars and skulls right here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast in just a minute. So stick with us as we as we do that. But first, we got to talk to you guys about one of our great sponsors, and that's Prize Picks. Prize Picks, of course, is daily fantasy made easy. If you're big into, big into daily fantasy sports, this is a way to get get your fix really quickly because all you do is pick two to five players. And if you think you ever beat on their day in fantasy, you can win up to ten times your money on any entry because all you're doing is guessing more or less than their prize pitch projections. And again, when you're looking at those prize pitch projections, you're just saying, hey, am I going to get more or less than what this, these people have set out? You're not competing against millions of other people to create the best lineup in the world. You're just saying, hey, I think they're going to have this day or I think they're going to have that day. And that's it's as simple as that. And it's not just the NFL. They do it for the NBA. They do it for the NHL. They do it for college sports. They do it for so many different things. So go check out Prize Picks right now. You can download the Prize Picks app in any of your app stores, or you can go to prizepicks.com to sign up and start playing daily fantasy sports today. First time you just receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's L O C K E D O N, locked on, all capital letters, all one word at prizepicks.com.
Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter. He's Alan Saunders. Let's get to our grades of the Steelers' 16-13 to win over the Ravens. Before we get into that, Alan, you were you were there on hand in Baltimore, correct? Yep. yep. What was the crowd like there when the Chris, Steelers – you know I was on hand in Baltimore because I could barely hear you talking to me on the Steelers pre- That was – <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I was saying that to confirm for our audience, but, yeah, we did a – Alan and I did the pregame show, and he was at the stadium, and, like, the band was playing, and we were talking to him, and he couldn't – it was really funny if you were watching it live. Um, but – so I was just saying that for our audience here so that they, like, they could confirm you could say that you were there and, and you could brag about it. But um, I wanted to – what was the what was the, st- the environment like when the Steelers scored that touchdown in the final minute and, and in, a, in a Baltimore stadium? Did, did, was the energy sapped out of the stadium or were there enough Steelers fans around that it was like, whoa, like this, this, was, a, this was an amazing moment? It was um, – you know, it was like – it's kind of hard to explain because, like, it, it's it, it wasn't really like a lot of a lot of those that I've experienced. You know, sometimes when it's like that overwhelming home crowd, like you can just kind of hear a pin drop. Like, think back to like a pit beat in Clemson. You know, when there were like eighty thousand people and then like nobody. Um, and sometimes you're in those like 50-50 games where the you know it's, it's, um, and covering the Steelers, you get a lot of those, right? Mm-hmm. Where there's you know, and and it's kind of loud no matter what happens. Uh, the thing that was interesting to me was that like there was a, there were a number of Steelers fans there, um, but it, it was like it was it, it didn't get quiet. It got like rabbly, right? Mm. Like 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 some people sometimes think people lose is just like oh, and never you know like you saw Najee Harris like getting into it with the fans. He was down yeah. Yeah, just after he scored. You know like the fans are yelling at him and pointing and. You know, and he was giving it right back to him, which I I thought was kind of fun. But like, it was it was like this like ang- there was it was ang- some anger. I thought that, that was someone kind of let out in that in that room at that moment uh, when that happened. And I think that's that's kind of what the Steelers Ravens rivalry is. So well, you could hear some Steelers fans, but it wasn't it, it was not quiet. I think it was it was angst angsty noise from the Ravens fans more than anything. That is interesting. Let's get into our grades here now. As, as as we all know, we do it like kind of like football decals that go on the helmet. We do stars and skulls. We don't do letter grades. Uh, stars are good. One star means you had a good play with like a decent day. Two stars means you had a great play with a pretty good day. Three stars, elite performance. Like you, this is going down on your resume as one of your best games. And then in reverse, one skull means you had a bad play, just didn't get a chance to redeem yourself. Two skulls means you had a bad game as a whole. Three skulls means you were all time terrible. Now, I'm going to go into this. We're going to start with the bad right now. And I may be too lenient with the with the skulls because I only gave one skull grades here. I didn't have any two skulls. I almost gave one to a couple of guys. But here I had four guys on my skulls list. I had Chris Boswell for another missed field goal. Chikuma Korfor I felt was the one offensive lineman who got whooped the most in this game. Granted, he also the, – the offensive line dominated a lot of this game. So I didn't want – I was like, I can't punish him too much, but – I still got to acknowledge how, he, how poorly he played. Devin Bush, I know he only played five snaps, but the fact that you had your plays taken by seventh round pick Mark Robinson and then like one of the few plays you were out there, you got beat for a pass uh, over the middle where you were supposed to be helping. I felt like that was rough on him. And then Arthur Mollette giving up the touchdown uh, in, this, in this late in the second quarter uh, and not really ha- – I felt he didn't have his redemption moment. Um, I felt like those were the biggest skulls there. Am I missing anyone on this list that, sh- that, that sh- or anyone that's not on this list that should be getting a skull from this game out? Um, I mean, I think that's a pretty, pretty solid list. Like, I, I didn't think, I really think you can kind of lump Devin Bush in with everybody else who was assigned to cover Mark Andrews. If you want to put Terrell it's Edmonds true. in that bunch, I, I might be willing to do that. Um, I like they just. It was very clear that the Ravens had exactly one guy they were willing to throw the ball to, and it was him, and the Steelers still couldn't cover him. Um, so I, I think there's some fair criticism there. Uh, and I think, um, can we give one to the offense coordinator? Is that legal? <laughs> <laughs> um, because I, I want to do Steelers, something different for the like, coaches at the end of the year. But, the, know, but game, game to game, I stick to players. Game, though, is it's very difficult to evaluate because yeah. I think for the most part, the Steelers players largely did what they were asked to do. And then you get to, well, how the hell did they then be in this game where it's 16-13, they need to score a touchdown with 
<laughs> you know, 50 seconds left to win it. Well, because some of the things they were asked to do didn't make some sense, and some of the things they were asked to do were sort of intentionally upside limiting because of the way the Ravens had beaten them so badly uh, three weeks ago that they just wanted to be safe and not mm -hmm. explosive uh, as, as a team. No, I feel you on that. And, and this was like, as anyone knows, I've been a person who, who who's like, I'm not rushing to blame Matt Canada for every, everything under the sun. And there were certain things that people were like, oh, this was a dumb play call. And I'm like, that's not my problem. My problem was when the run game was working and you had the Ravens starting to sell out to stop it. And I get that they, you're pounding them and you're pounding them and you're pounding them. But there were so many times like, man, just call play action. Just give yourself a chance to get get a chunk here that, that that could that could get you on the board, you know. And then when they kept getting into the red zone and failing, I was just like, man, like I just I didn't like some of the some of the sequencing that we saw that we were seeing Adam Atkin. And that's my biggest complaint. Everyone's gonna say it's you know it's oh he doesn't call plays over the middle. There's guys that run over the middle. You know, I think it's it George just Pickens is wide open over the middle on one play in that game. Yeah, yeah I mean, when when Kenny Pickett got sacked, yeah, I was yeah. I, like, people were like, "Oh, it's a dumb play call." I'm like, "Y'all, like George Pickens <laughs> is open. That's just that's just a play that Kenny got to Kenny got to make there. It, that's not the problem. But to me, it, it, again, it's more of the timing of things. Yeah, it, the it meshing. Like they never concepts. adjusted to the fact that the Steelers were running the ball so well. Like it's like yeah. they were play calling, like that wasn't happening, even though it was, right. and so. There were still like these weird, like, like they passed a lot on third and short when they were averaging five yards a carry and they didn't run play action, which, like, okay, game planning for the Ravens. I would say, like, look, Kenny hasn't necessarily been the greatest at dealing with pressure. Our line isn't necessarily the greatest at blocking it. The Ravens blitz a whole lot. So, like, slow developing passing plays. All right, let's maybe not put a whole lot of those in this week. But then when you're running for five, six yards of carry, you got to be able to be quick enough on your feet to adjust and say, okay, here's what's really going to get them next. And I didn't think they did that. I, I, I agree with that with that sentiment there. Let's get to the one-star guys because, like we said, we, whenever, whenever the Steelers win, we want to do like the worst to the best, and we'll start with the one-star guys. These are guys who I thought had a couple good moments here and there but didn't have the overall like best game or whatever. Gunnar Olszewski, simply because of that block that he threw uh, to, on the on the jet sweep to Jalen Warren, took out two guys, and I was like, I, I love seeing wide receivers block. I grew up watching Heinz Ward, man, so whenever I see someone do that, I'm like, ooh, that, that, you you earn you earn some props with me. Um, I also put Mason Cole in there. There were a couple plays he I thought he got whipped, Allen, but by and large, the Steelers offensive line dominated. And you can't do that without your center. Um, so he gets a star in there. George Pickens didn't win on one-on-one -on -one in the end zone, did step out of bounds in the play, but made on one of his amazing catches over the middle. That's why I gave him the star. I felt like he not only redeemed it, he earned a star with that. Steven Sims, though. That catch over the middle and that throw from Kenny Pickett. We'll get into where his stars were in a bit here. But um, Steven Sims, Alan, Alan I, I thought it, we'll, 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 I want to pause through the reading these names here. I thought Steven Sims, that catch, that was that's one of those catches that like you going to stick around type of catches uh, to see. It. So we're going to bring you back to next year's training camp and see how you keep growing. Yeah, I think I think Sims, you know, I was literally watching that play and I'm like, hey, I think this is a good place for a deep shot. <laughs> and, then, and then saw where it was going. I was like, eh, to that guy? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, yeah. I will have to, I will admit uh, that I wasn't, I thought it was a good place for a deep shot. And then I saw Steven Sims bracketed and I'm like, maybe not that one. Okay. Never mind. I was wrong. That was great. Um, you know, it, it was a great play, great throw by Kenny. That's probably, I think that might be the most difficult throw uh, we've seen him complete so far absolutely uh, that, that was incredible i i like this list there's a lot of guys in there and, and maybe some of these guys will be later but i think i, I think i'd like to throw pat farmuth in there maybe you gave him two that's cool um i'm cool with that too but i, I thought he was above average and um you know i i meant Rob, rob spillane too i thought uh what well, oh, was pretty oh. good as well so the, hey uh, hey hey no spoilers way. No spoilers, right, sir. Right. I will say I meant to put Pat Fryman. I had Pat Fryman with initially on the two stars, and I was bumping him to the one star, but then I forgot that. But then I forgot to put him on the one star. So retro retrospect, Pat Fryman gets one star. Other guys who got one stars for the people that are listening and can't see the the visuals. Mark Robinson for filling in. I thought he was very physical. The Marvin Leal, really good game from him. Maybe his best game. 
for the Steelers yet with how physical he was at the point of attack. Alex Highsmith contributing against the run didn't get his sack, but was a was a was helping. Cam Sutton I thought was good in coverage, and Terrell Evans six tackles definitely contributing there as well. We'll get to the two and three star grade before Allen starts just giving them all out here in a minute uh, on the Locked On Steelers podcast. No bus ticket grades by the way uh, this, this week like I had with Marcus Allen a couple weeks ago. Though some did we ever find out which player it was that went onto the field for the Steelers on the on their interception celebration or whatever no i did not i, I still haven't anymore. either i, 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 I but like I, I was looking on the broadcast and i was looking on on the angles they gave i i, I still haven't seen someone i'm like uh did it even happen like uh, and then someone pointed out on the ravens touchdown they had people come off the bench who weren't who, who weren't in the game and celebrating and they didn't call, get called for it i was like eh, that's weird anyways there's no bus ticket grade. No this bus week. tickets this week. So, so no, Marcus Allen did. Although Marcus Allen uh, dancing in the locker room again, it's, it's what I'm he fine does. With that, I see. Yeah, because no, no penalties come from that. No penalties in the locker room. It's fine. It, indeed. We'll get into the two and three star grades in just a minute here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. So don't go anywhere. But first, we got to talk to you guys about BetOnline.net. BetOnline is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports information. Find all the latest news, developments, and sports reviews right there on bet online and that includes the nfl as you get ready for the playoffs all the scenarios all the odds all the ends you can find at bet online they also do nba nhl college sports and all sports out there go to bet online your continued source for all your your betting stats sports wagering information live betting playoffs esports and more head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends of the action when you visit bet online where the game starts Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. Alan, let's talk about some more of these grades here. Let's get to the two-star grades. And I, I think I'm going to get some pushback on, on one two-star grade here that I think some people really want a three-star for, but I'll okay. explain why. Okay. And it's the person at the top of the list, Kenny Pickett, is a two-star. I didn't give him three stars. Why? Because of why I didn't, he still hasn't put together the complete game for me. I thought he did what was needed to be done late in the game and with some very clutch throws, and he didn't turn the ball over. For that, he gets two stars. But if you get a three star, to me, you got it. Like if he had thrown for two touchdowns and like 250 yards against this defense, and as a rookie, I, I would have, and then I would have consi- con- considered it there. But am I being, am I being too cautious? Am I being too stingy with the stars here on Kenny Pickett's day? No, no, I think you're dead on. Okay, um, thank you. Woo! You know, I, I think this is the se- you know this is the second week in a row. I think you can say Kenny Pickett was really pretty average until the last drive of the game, maybe even below average. Um, now, again, like we talked about the coordinator, I don't think he was really asked to do like a ton before oh, that in this yeah. game. But like the second to last drive, he was, and then he it didn't go so well, right? And then the last <laughs> drive went great. So you know, I don't know, like, but I think, you know, it, it's it's awesome. It's it's incredible to see uh, Kenny have the success he's had late in games. I also think as someone that is very familiar with Kenny's game, like it doesn't surprise me either. Like I think so, you right. know, to to some extent, like. It, I mean, maybe this isn't necessarily the fairest thing to him, but it's kind of baked into my expectations. Like that's who that guy is. Like I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by the throw to Steven Sims. Okay, that was yeah, impressive. That was a pre- okay. that was the throw of the I'm, night for me. I'm impressed by the two big plays yeah. he made, rolling to his left, which he's yeah. not always been the best at throwing on the run, rolling to his left. The Najee Harris touchdown he won earlier in the game. I think it was the Pat Fryer move. Um, not, not exactly sure. Yeah, no, but, it was Pat. Um, yes. Two of those plays where he's running to his left, and I'm like, okay, that's something I haven't seen a lot of. That impresses me. Kenny Pickett being tough as nails, completely unflappable under pressure, and leading his team to victory in the last minute. Like, yeah, I don't know, I've seen that a whole bunch. Like, I don't know, <laughs> it doesn't jump off the page for me like some of this other stuff has. That's who he is. That's the guy you drafted. Now, if the guy you drafted suddenly shows more arm talent than you thought he had, oh, well, now he may be on to something. But, like, I knew Kenny Pickett was going to go down to the wire gunslinging every single time he got an opportunity to will his team to victory, and I'm very happy for him and for the team that he's shown that, that he's going to continue to do that. But, um, you know, I think the, the first three quarters of this game, he probably is not going to have, like, a great time watching the tape of. Like, it's not it, – it, it was not an exciting evening for him until that last drive. 
It, it wasn't. So, again, that's why I know some Steelers fans are going to be out there. Well, you are just saying Kenny. I'm like, listen, listen, listen. I am a very – I listen, as a person who covered him at Pitt, as a person who's a Pitt alum, I, I, I have a lot of appreciation for what Kenny Pickett does. That being said, he's a two-star. Other two-star players, I felt T.J. Watt, especially with the sack that he had, I thought that was extremely timely in helping against the run. Robert Spillane, this is where he gets the two stars. Um, he's been playing better of, of late and really stepping in there. I thought that he deserved it. Both Cam Hayward and Larry Ogunjobi as tone setters on the on, on the defensive line. I thought they changed the line of scrimmage a lot, really helped against the run. And then two offensive linemen get two stars here, James Daniels, Dan Moore Jr. I felt like both of them were really helpful in pushing the line and giving Najee Harris the space that he needed there. Uh, Alan, anyone that I awarded too much love to here on the list? No, I don't. I don't think so. I think that's a pretty solid list. I, I want to talk about TJ. I thought uh, this was his. I thought this was his best game against the run since he came back from his injury. Mm, I thought I agree. he was he was very good against the run in this game, um, and that really was what they needed him to be. Um, and he looked you know, maybe a little bit healthier um, than he's been. I, I, I thought he looked really good. That to me was one of his most complete games of the year. Just had the one sack. Didn't have that many pressures, of course. Baltimore was terrified to throw the ball, so like it was <laughs> hard to have a lot of pressures. Right, but uh, I thought he was really, really good. Um, and I guess I'll wait and see who the three star guys are to uh, to see if there's anybody I think should be on this list. But look, I don't think you can say enough about the job of guys like James Daniels on that offensive line. Um, I think he is really a catalyst for everything they do. I think they were personally offended by what happened in week 14 mm. and their inability to gain traction in the running game and really do what they did in this game, right? They got behind in week 14 and they started throwing early when they got yeah. behind in that game because they weren't running the ball that well. And this game, the difference to me and the reason this game never gets farther out of hand is that even though they were behind, they were still running the ball because they were beating butts on the line of scrimmage. And it was just obvious, man. I mean, I hope yeah. – I hope you could tell from the broadcast angle. We got a pretty low angle oh, there. We we could tell, dude. It was just cavernous holes in the middle of that mm -hmm. Ravens defensive line. I know they didn't have Clayus Campbell. I know he's a great player for him, but it was just a butt whipping. And uh, and I think that's that's been coming for this line. We've seen like incremental improvement. Like oh, they're a little bit better in the running game, and they're not taking quite so many sacks. But I don't think there's been a game where you can see like you could say until this game, like Steelers offensive line beat the crap out of their opponent. Mm -hmm. Steelers offensive line beat the crap out of their opponent in Baltimore and in a very timely uh, fashion to get that kind of performance from them. And I give, I give Daniels kind of the – and Mason Cole's the center, and, and you kind of got to obviously give credit to the center when things go right to the offensive line because he's putting people in places. But I feel like Dan, James Daniels is kind of like the the leader of that group. And uh, and, and I kind of give him some credit for those guys stepping up in, in, in a big spot. I thought the guy that had the best date on the offensive line is the one name I haven't so named. Maybe we were going to get to him, so I didn't. I didn't bring it up. I'm, I'm getting I better. Appreciate you. Look, look, look at you. Look at you learning. Look at the pace of the game. All right, our three star players: Najee Harris. You can't deny it. That guy. That, that I think that was Najee Harris's best game. Also gave Minka Fitzpatrick three stars for his interception. Also had nine tackles. He's just ridiculous. Kevin Dotson, though, is that one offensive lineman I was talking about. I thought this was his best game that I've ever seen him play for the Steelers. Dominant in the run game. Really solid in the pass game. Looked like he was on his P's and Q's. And then finally, Jalen Warren, his first ever three-star grade here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I, I thought that he went above and beyond in what he did in this game. But all four of these guys, Najee, Minka, Dotson, Warren, all of them, uh, I thought had really spectacular performances. Uh, what Alan, has Najee Harris shut up the haters enough or – is this is he still a, a a big work in progress, or is he being the player the Steelers thought that they that they were getting? I get this question a lot, and like I, I always kind of have to give like multiple caveats before I can answer it. Right, like <laughs> Najee Harris is the player that the Steelers thought he was going to be, and it was very clear that he was hurt early in the year, and that was holding him back from being the player that we saw last year. Like he was very good last year. Like mm -hmm. he wasn't great, but he was he was good. And I think he's. This is maybe one of the best performances I've seen from him. Um, and I think, no matter how good Najee Harris is going to be, like he he will never be good enough to make um, the people that say like you shouldn't ever draft a running back in the first round, especially when your team is like nineteen other holes wrong. Like <laughs> like it doesn't matter how right. good he is. Like 
that sentiment is never going to go away. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as like some Trent Richardson comparisons we saw on social media, oh, yeah, I think God. those people could probably go crawl in a hole right now. Like that, that that's out of here. Uh, I think Ooh. Najee and Jalen Warren combined for now talking about how good the offensive line was and how big and obvious those holes were, even from the press box, they, they were combined 32 rushing yards, adjusted rushing yards over expectation in that game. So, mm -hmm. so the Steelers offensive line blocked them 150 yard game and they went out and got a 190 yard game. Like that's like, those guys were awesome. I, I felt like they they were, um, and I also feel like Jalen Warren. Like I was one of those people that like I'm I I, I was never putting down Jalen Warren, but the people that were saying oh he's better than Najee just starting right now, I'm like okay stop it. Like you want to give him credit, but now you're doing too much. But in this game, you know both of these guys, whenever they had space, they took the most out of it. Jalen Warren had that that jet sweep run that he took for 31 yards. Um, and even without that, he still had, you know, 45 yards on 11 carries outside of that. You'll take that out of your backup running back every day. And, and, and Alan, I think this is a real thing. And I'm probably going to talk more about this during the week, but like, it's very, it's, I can, it's very foreseeable that if these two stay together and stay healthy for uh, the next few years, they could extend each other's careers. You know, everyone talks about how Mike Tomlin. Just, just, just wait, I got to, hold, hold on, this is. See, now, now, uh oh, Alan, Alan has walked off camera and is talking. We're gonna have problems because see, this is the this oh, is gosh. the top secret Steelers now oh, You know, list of stories to write this week. Oh and, no, oh, and right there, is War Warren extends Nazi's <laughs> career. Right there, right. There. You have to blur all the rest of that out. You got technology for it, okay? But it's right there on the list. <laughs> I, I am sorry for it. Hey, you spoiled my show. I spoiled your website. There you go. We're even now. But 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 okay, but lead us into that. So that's that's an article that you all guys are gonna write for SteelersNow.com this week. But I mean, this seems like you know, Mike Tom when everyone's talking about he runs the wheels off his running backs. I, I've always felt like he take he uses his best running backs, and when he doesn't have multiple best running backs, he's gonna use the one that does better. And I think that's what he did with Le'Veon Bell, uh, that's what he did with Lee Parker. But I think that you're seeing, I mean, in this game, 22 carries for Najee Harris, 12 carries for Jalen Warren. That's a great pace when you have a one-two punch like that. It is going to extend Najee Harris's career, and it's showing to me like a pretty solid amount of growth from Mike Tomlin. He is the guy that runs them to the wheels fall off. That is his MO. And it's not like he just said that to say it. Like, he believed it. And now yeah. he's seeing, hey, this, this is – this is kind of okay to have too. Um, and, and I think they fit They're They're finding unique ways to fit them together. Like Jalen Warren has been the third down back, like some of the time, but it hasn't been all the time. They're mixing and matching. And you talked about that jet sweep. Like think about what that jet sweep represents, right? So Najee, most of his yards in this game came inside the tackles. He was, yep. they were dominating from guard to guard and Najee was running inside the tackles. Uh, but you you got to keep people on us to, to the width. Jalen, probably a little bit quicker. Um, so, okay, and then we're going to put both backs on the field at the same time and run Jalen with a jet. Okay, so now we're finding ways to get both guys involved in the offense. Uh, we're finding ways to attack Baltimore with our run game in multiple different directions, right? We're going to move you outside the box. We're going to keep you keep Donaghy inside the box. What, now, the next time you run it, and they did it again later in the game, you bring the same package in. Then you bring Jalen Warren in motion. Now here goes Najee on inside zone, and there's one fewer guy in the box for him to run over going up the middle. And I just felt like that was really – that was an intentional part of that game plan. They've been working on that for a couple weeks. And it just shows that they're committed to these two guys being a group. And it is not yeah. just like, oh, Najee was kind of struggling. We'll just throw this guy a bone. Like um, Jalen Warren's a part of this offensive group – for the future. When we're talking about like the Steelers in 2023 and 24, put his name on there because he's yeah. going to be here. He's going to be part of this offense. Absolutely. Other guys we wanted to discuss here. I said, Kevin Dotson, Kevin Dotson has been a roller coaster for a lot this year, Alan, but I felt like this was, this was the high point of the roller coaster. Granted after a high point in a roller coaster, there's usually the part where you're screaming as you're falling <laughs> for like a mile downwards and you know that could be, mean a collapse is coming but right now i think kevin dotson is playing good football and it should be acknowledged this is not an analogy got dark real fast yeah, it did it did i just i listen i used to hate roller coasters as a kid i got used to them i like them now but mm, some of them two tall ones mm, no chris don't do that I, 
I think part of it is Kevin Dotson is just a butt kicker, and that's what he is. Yes. That's what this like, you know, like that that saying, like when when all you have is a hammer, everything's a nail, right? Well, like <laughs> Kevin Dotson's a hammer, and but the Baltimore Ravens really are a nail. Like that's they put him in a position to do exactly what he does well, and a whole lot of it. And you know, I think that's one of the things about the Steelers' offense that has maybe been a bit of an untalked about problem that they have, is that they have some good players, but a lot of their good players don't go that well together. Okay, yeah. Like Chooks is a pretty good overall tackle. Like he's like average to above average tackle, but right. Chooks is only really good at pass blocking and yeah. very mediocre run block. Now, Kevin Dotson has been probably like a little bit below average left guard. But if you just let him fire off the ball and tandem block the D tackle and start climbing to the next level and 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 mauling people, he's very good at that. Um, but they can't run to maximize Dot all the time because then that because then you get chooks on the skull list, right? And then you can't do it the other way because then Dotson has a bad game. They don't have like the personnel that matches, but I, it is important though. And, and we could talk about this at linebacker, too. Like, when they have games that require a certain style of play, they have the ability to go to a guy like Dotson and say, okay, here's what it is. We need to run the ball 50 times to beat the Ravens. Go kick some butt. Let's go. And, and so um, I think it's a really strong sign for that line that they were able to do that. And uh, But it is one of the – like, that roller coaster is because they don't fit together that well. <laughs> I, I agree they don't uh i just I'm, i apologize if it came off if it did get a little dark there with, i just i have some bad memories of roller coasters that i thought i could handle and i was just like nope 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 can't do this um we're, screaming, but, we're falling where am i no. where am i yeah i'm just falling but but, but I'll, again i'll say this kevin dotson three three stars amazing performance from him i i'm intrigued to see if he can keep it up and then of course the last guy was Micah fitzpatrick another interception is sixth of the year um, and just continues to come up in big ways and still was contributing with tackling. Uh, and I also wanted to get your thoughts on, th- on this, Alan. From, I, I'm not sure if you can see it from the booth, but you might have seen it on the broadcast when after Cam Hayward's penalty and the Ravens scored the touchdown, there was frustration on the Steelers' sideline, and Minka kind of barked at Cam Hayward, and Cam Hayward barked back, and there was a bit of back and forth, but all that was put aside, and they, this defense came together to put together another dominant second half, and I believe you had an amazing third quarter stat about what the Steelers have done. Yeah, 12 points total in their last three second halves, um, which is that's bonkers. And uh, each of the last two games have ended with four consecutive defensive stops. Minka Fitzpatrick has ended two games with with an interception. He uh, broke up a pass on the last offensive play for the Colts in Indianapolis. Jeez. And he blocked the extra point to send the game since that. Like, they're closers. I tried yeah. to talk to the guys on the defense about this because I wanted to write about it. So this is over here, too. Um, <laughs> but but they won't give up the goods. But I, I got to figure out what's going on at halftime with that defense, man. They are figuring it out as games go on, that they are adjusting. They're in, well, everything we, we talked earlier about the offense didn't do, they didn't adjust to what was going right for them and change their play calling style to, to you know, deal with the facts that were happening on the ground. Steelers defense is doing that, and they're doing it really, really well. Um, they are just been absolutely dominant in the second half of games, and uh, it's been awesome to see. And Minka Fitzpatrick, man, he went down with that ankle injury, and he was kind of rolling around, and it looked like it might I be I was bad. like, that's it. If Minka's do- done, they're finished. Season's <laughs> over. Like, he's that important to that team that we're like – and then, of course, you know, last drive – Nick asked me, Nick Faribault, you know, my 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 coworker at SteelersNow.com says, uh, what do you think is gonna happen here? And I think I said, Nick, if it's Patrick's gonna get an interception. It's just what he does, man. There He's the is. closer. Like what he oh, does. It's the, we just need one more defensive stop to 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 end the game. All right, we'll dial up to me trumpets and bring 39 in from the bullpen. <laughs> this thing's about to end. And that's what happened. The Steelers should get a Timmy Trumpets. What am I saying? They have renegade. I I shouldn't curse. I shouldn't disrespect sticks like that uh, out here in, the, in, in a, on a Steelers podcast. But there you have it. There's our three star ratings. Uh, our two star ratings. There are all of our grades from the Steelers and the Ravens game. Alan, thanks so much for joining us here again on the Locked On Steelers podcast. You're always a ton of fun and very knowledgeable. Uh, we learn a lot from you here on the on this show. Um, let people know they can find you, follow you, get more of your work, and anything else you got coming up. At a Saunders underscore PGH on Twitter. 
Um, SteelersNow.com for all our Steelers stuff. If you want to know more about DeMar Hamlin, PittsburghSportsNow.com where we cover Pitt. And I was actually sharing on Twitter some old stories just to try to give some people some uh, some perspective about what DeMar is all about. And uh, so that's all there as well. And what do I got going on this week? Uh, we're still in the hunt, man. We're, we're hunting. We're in the we're we're in the postseason chase once more. So back at the ACK at uh, one o'clock on Sunday. There, there you have it. We'll both be there. I'll be there for Locked On Steelers. I'm Chris Carter, host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. You can find the show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. Like this video if you saw it on YouTube. Subscribe to this channel for all of our daily up, up episodes and our bonus updates when we have our bonus episodes. Just want to say again, yeah, a, a, big, a big, just thoughtful prayer out to the Hamlin family, Damar Hamlin, hoping that he pulls through. Um, we also have coverage of this at, at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, where I, where I also write about Pitt athletics. Noah Hiles and I were right, we're, we're right on it as soon as it happened, putting our updates in there. Also, the thoughts and reactions from former teammates, Steelers, Pitt players, Pitt alum, a lot of people who ha- who are out there praying with everyone else. We th- we hope the best for Demar Hamlin and that we get the best news in the days to come. Uh, but again, Locked On Steelers will be back Wednesday. We'll have Kale Berger on the show. It's going to be a fun episode with him breaking things down and getting you ready for Steelers Browns this week and all the things the Steelers need to have to see if they can make the playoffs. We'll see you then right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. 